Today I'm spending two hours riding the oldest steam engine locomotive in the world. It was commissioned in 1900. It's been in operation for 123 years. But first I gotta meet up with Rachel to get some coffee because that's the only way she can survive for the day. That's all I need. So here's the plan for the rest of the day. Learn how to drive Australian style, ride the oldest train in the world, deliver a special surprise to my parents, catch a flight, and cap off a long, tiring day in style. We have a 45 minute drive to the station, which means we had to rent a car, and I have to figure out how to drive Australian style. Wheels on the opposite side of the road, cars drive on the opposite side of the road. I drove a little bit last night to get familiar with it, but it's weird. I haven't driven in like seven months. I haven't hit anything yet, which is uh, honestly surprising. I've been close. Hopefully we can keep that streak going now. I think the weirdest part for me is I'm like conditioned to drive kind of on the left side of the lane. I'm having to like drive on the right side of the lane and it feels like my car is halfway in both lanes. So I keep drifting subconsciously over to the left and then my car really is halfway in between lanes. It's like I'm drunk. I'm not drunk. I would never drink and drive. Don't do that. That's bad. So Puffing Billy, the steam engine, was built in 1813. The railway was commissioned in 1900, so it's been here for 123 years. Hello, we have uh, reservations, I think, for the 1115. Trevor Bauer, we booked online. I print your ticket now. Encourage hates for hurry. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Station is tucked away from modern society just enough to maintain its old school vibe. It really does feel isolated. The old steam engine gave me serious murder on the Orient Express vibe, so I half expected to see Johnny Depp boarding one of the rail cars. It's crazy to think that this was cutting edge technology less than 200 years ago. And now we have bullet trains traveling hundreds of miles per hour. About ready to depart. See how fast this thing takes off in the station. Top speed is uh, five miles an hour. <laughs> Eight kilometers. Uh, should be a nice enjoying ride. Wow. You've got a map so you know where we're going. You can sit with your legs out. Legs out, bottoms in, hang on. But you've got to be over four. That's the conductor bell to let us know that the train is leaving. Having just been in Japan where you get doo 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 and then the doors close and the train whooshes away, having someone walk up and down with a conductor bell is actually kind of cool. Hi. Into the forest. The steam powered engine, it does burn coal to generate the steam. So might not be the most environmentally friendly, but they weren't thinking about that stuff back in 1833 when this thing was built. <laughs> what do you think of this thing's speed, Rachel? This feels faster than five miles an hour. Have you ever been five miles an hour before? Yeah, I feel like I walk five miles an hour. <laughs> Now, compared to modern trains, the accommodations on board obviously aren't great. No padded seats or reclining chairs or even windows on this ride. We're literally getting covered in soot from the cold that's burning. It's all over us. Oh, God. You're just noticing that? Rachel's worried about the shirt for Instagram, but you can just Photoshop it out. No, Spot fill tool. How do you think this compares to the bullet train experience in Japan? Cooler. Subway system in Japan or Puffin' Billy, what do you think? For the scenic route, I choose Puffing Billy. For efficiency, I choose Subway System. Yeah. <laughs> hey look, flowers. So the steam engine stopped for uh, cars to cross the railroad tracks. Our conductor is up at the uh, railway station at the, what do they call them? Our conductor just stopped to take a picture of a garbage truck. I don't know if the garbage truck is uh, in trouble or if we're in trouble or what. But... He might just be a fan of garbage truck. That's something you would do, right, Rachel? Stop to take a picture of a garbage truck? Uh, what's that? Garbage truck time. I love garbage trucks. Put that on a shirt on Rachel's website. I love garbage trucks. We'll get to the bottom of the garbage truck here in a minute. Everyone has like literally stopped to wait at us. Yeah, part of the culture for a long time. I mean, it's been here longer than anyone here has been alive. So they all probably grew up as those little kids waving to Puffing Billy as it goes by. 10 points for the first one spot. A walla. No, 15 points for the first one to spot a, spot a koala, and 10 points for the first one to spot a kangaroo starting now, yesterday in the capital. What about a platypus? What if you see a platypus? A platypus is 50 points. 50 points for a platypus. We know where your priorities lie, Chalupa. Because platypus is, I think, rare. How many points for that bird sitting in the tree? Two points. Only two points? Yeah, it's pretty, but I don't know what it is. But I get the two points is, because I spotted it. Wait, wait, wait. What is the rating scale here? It's rareness and prettiness, and you have to know what it is? Yeah. Two points go to any unidentified cool animals. 
Wasn't that a kookaburra? No. Maybe. No. Maybe. No. Maybe. It has a kookaburra. That's 31. What? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows the song Kookaburra sits in your gum tree. Very, very. You don't know the song. <laughs> Laugh, kookaburra. I guess people didn't need to use a restroom back in 1900 as there are no restrooms on board, so we stopped for a quick bathroom break, and I took this time to investigate the most pressing issue of the day. Sir, do we know what happened earlier with the garbage truck? I think he went through a red signal on the crossing, and if he did, and I've seen him, that's a thousand dollar fine. That's not good. Seems like he was caught red-handed though. Conductor got a picture of him. So apparently that doesn't happen every train ride. <laughs> Knock one of those over. Knock one of those over, a thousand dollar fine. Where are we at selfies wise, Shalupa? How many selfies have we taken? I'm trying to get a good one. That Instagram influencer life's not easy. It ain't easy. Well, Shalupa has more sponsors than I do, so maybe I should learn a thing or two. Now, there are a lot of cool views on the ride, but we could have used some eye protection to enjoy them. It made me think, maybe clean energy is the way to go after all. Any selfies of you with uh, soot on your face? How many selfies have you taken? Big too many. I'm just trying to get, the problem is it's not the set. I'm not worried about me. It's the, I'm trying to get a cool, I'm trying to get a good like the scenery at the same time. So I'm not critiquing the selfie of me, I'm critiquing the background. Of course it wouldn't be a critique of you. How could you possibly critique anything about you? Have you gotten any with the, uh, so on Look your at the face? Dog. Oh, I thought the dog was driving because the steering wheel on the other side. The amount of excitement you just had? Because it looked like he was on the steering wheel and there's someone honked and I thought he was honking. Dogs do not drive in Australia. I feel like I'm in the 1900s. Like even people in the town seem to be dressed like the old days. This is dressed like the new days? Yeah. What is dressed like the old days? Like the, it's like Indiana Jones look. <laughs> Indiana Jones. I got soot smeared here on my white Bauer outage hat. If you want one without soot, you can check it out at trevorbauer.com. They're available now. Just pulled into the station. We're halfway done with our trip. Time to get some eats. <laughs> Enjoy. So there's no food on the train, but in replacement for that, we got a picnic. What do we got here, Chalupa? We got cheese, crackers, salami. Chalupa, there's a couple sleeping ducks right over there. You wanna to try to catch them? I honestly have always wondered though, like how ducks sleep. Where do they sleep? They sleep in the water? They look like they're sleeping over there and there's a ledge right above them. I feel like if we dropped from the ledge on top of them into the water, we could catch them. Yeah, I decided to feed them instead of jumping on them. I felt like that was like a better thing to do. Good change up. Do ducks eat cheese? Do they like cheese? I don't think they like brie cheese. What kind of cheese would they like? After a relaxing lunch, we headed back to the train with one goal in mind. The whole entire mission for this half of the train trip is to get the perfect Instagram picture for Rachel. It's this old wooden bridge. It takes about 30 seconds to get over it, but the angle that we need is like a five second window. We have this little area of our car right here so she can look like she's on the train by herself. We're gonna have to get the right framing, the right aperture, the right ISO, the right facial expression for Chalupa, the right angle. We were wondering earlier how the train turns around, the locomotive. Chalupa thought it was turning around in a circle. I said, well, it probably just hitches on facing the train and then reverses its way to pull the train in the opposite direction. What do you think of that, Chalupa? I thought there was no way that that was correct. Turns out that was correct. How many points is that for me? I'll give you 10. 11, 11. 11 points for that, but 30 for seeing a kookaburra? I guess Chalupa now has 60 points. I think you want to make sure that I'm winning by the time we get to the bridge, otherwise there's no Instagram picture for you. Look at this. This is Rachel like 90% of the time. 
What do you have to say for yourself, Chalupa? I was taking a video outside. That looked like selfie pose. But I was getting a time lapse. You wanna see it? It's almost time. I gotta take the hat off so nothing's in my face. We got one shot of this. I literally held the button down. Here's 10,000 pictures to scroll through. I regret putting my arm up. <laughs> so I nailed the pictures, but you didn't nail the pose? And right as you stopped taking it, I like went to put my eye hand down. That's my ran out of memory on my card. It's 128 gigabytes. Will one make it to the Instagram, you think, or no? For sure. The people want to know, though, will you be compositing like seven of the images, like taking your face from one, your pose from another. No. You would never do that, right? Do you want your camera back? Yes, maybe. Okay, it's currently 3.30. We have a flight to Sydney tonight at 8.30 in five hours. We have a couple more things that we have to do at Melbourne, including taking pictures of butterflies at the zoo to send to my dad. They're his favorite thing from Australia, so we have to surprise him with a video or a picture of him at least. Can we get a couple tickets? Yeah. How long are you guys here for? Approximately 15 minutes. <laughs> Really? Yeah. And just the butterflies? Just the butterflies. You don't want to say anything else? Well, we, we don't have time. Yeah. A couple years ago, my parents came to Australia, saw the butterfly garden, and they said that we have to do it while we're here. Are you able to do a refund? Or can you? 34 years ago, on their honeymoon, my parents came to Australia, and they saw the butterfly garden. The thing that my dad speaks about most my mom speaks about my dad driving on the opposite side of the road and almost getting them killed the most. But pop into the butterfly garden and try to get my dad on FaceTime or something. So many butterflies. Dude, this thing's massive. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. That thing's huge. It's like a bird. Chalupa, if that thing was flying at you, it'd be the size of your face. You'd be so scared. It's a butterfly. What's it gonna do? It swallow your face whole. Buster doesn't have an iPhone, so he doesn't have FaceTime. Oh, I'm calling him on signal. Buster's not answering. Mom will answer. Hey, Mom. Hi. Yeah. Guess where we are. I can tell. There's butterflies, too. Most of it looks the same, except you're all grown up, and you weren't around back then. <laughs> oh, look, on the vlog camera. Yeah, is Dad there? Oh, bogus. I think dad's calling me from the other phone. Hey, Buster, can you do video? There you are. Oh, here's the butterfly. Yep. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of them over here. <laughs> Look at that thing. Maybe it looks pretty similar. I can't, you know, it's a lot of years ago, so I can't remember exactly, but pretty similar. Oh, it's on my hat? There's one on my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the coolest places I've ever been. <laughs> I'm long toss. I'll, I'll let you go. Okay, love you. And with that, it was off to Sydney to end my day in style. I need to take the two kilos out. Where are those kilos gonna go? <laughs> oh boy. 23 is the limit. Even with your stuff, mine comes in under. How much do I have able to? Good thing we got here like two hours early so we could figure out how to move your stuff around. That's gotta be enough. Yep, that's my suitcase as well. RIP extra space. Dude, that bell counted in there. How'd you do that? I just looked at it and it changed. Did both of your bags get stopped for inspection? What? I think both your bags got stopped. There you go. There we go. Just stand back there for me. Thank you. This is a Burbank style airport. Walk on the tarmac to board the plane from the back. Hello. Hello. The grind continues. These are called chips in Australia. They're delicious everywhere. Chicken burger, it's not supposed to have mayo on it. Gotta do what you gotta do when you're super tired and Uber Eats is a godsend, always.